I can pull back. Yeah, this is a dongo. This is a dongo. Yes, yeah, yes, so. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I've seen it. What the hell is that thing? Looks like a raccoon. They're really gonna eat the raccoon? Who knows? Anything out here ain't great good, man. I've been far too easy on China. There is a massive disconnect between the people living in the sophisticated cities of China and, well, China as a whole. Remember, the majority of people living in China do not live in Shanghai, Shenzhen, Beijing, Guangzhou, these big metropolises, these places with all the fancy restaurants, with the Sun Li Tuan areas or the Coco Parks or whatever it is that uh, the rich and privileged hang out in. The majority of China is actually very different. Now, I have had the opportunity to explore rural China, and not just rural China, China in general, because don't forget, once you leave these fancy cities and you just go to a slightly smaller city, it changes, everything changes drastically. Being of an adventurous nature, it's in my blood, it's in my family, my father was an adventurer and uh, he did all his adventures through Africa. I took on the mantle of being this uh, adventurer through China and I did this via motorcycle. And it gave me a very unique insight into how China really operates. Because once you leave the cities and you leave the highways, because China's highway network is fantastic, but you can drive across the entire country and not see anything interesting because it's just one long, fairly newly built highway that just cuts through everything. It's the small roads that count. It's the villages up in the mountains. It's the villages down in the valleys. It's the smaller cities and towns that you are forced to travel through when not driving or riding on the highways. I've seen a lot. I've given China a very sort of easy pass on a lot of the terrible things I noticed while traveling through these sort of backwards areas and the smaller cities of China. The reason being that I have a lot of respect for my Chinese friends and family and of course when I first got to China, the idea of airing any of this dirty laundry just wasn't a very good idea. It still isn't. If you want to live in China to talk about the bad things, the challenges and the issues that China still currently faces will actually most likely end up with you being shut down and deported. So if you want to maintain your lifestyle in China, it's just best to avoid these kind of topics. Anyway, enough of that nonsense. I'm getting so sick and tired of this disconnect with these privileged spoiled, pampered people going online and trying to tell the world, oh, China doesn't do this, China doesn't do that. No, this is not China. China's great. China's civilized. China's freedom of speech. China's this and that. When I know for a fact it's not true, and I'm going to prove it to you in this video. I'm going to prove to you why we are currently suffering this crisis that has uh, originated in China and now spreading around the world, how it came to be, and the mechanisms that have allowed it to happen. And these are, of course, the idea of eating strange animals that come out of, the, out of the wild, the idea of eating anything and everything that walks, and the lack of hygiene that you find in greater China. So I decided rather than just talking and going on about it, I'd show you and I'd show proof of stuff that I filmed myself throughout some of my journeys in China. We're going to start out with that clip that I showed you earlier. This was in some part of rural Guizhou that we were riding through. It's not the first time I've seen poachers. In fact, I've seen poachers in Guangdong where I lived very often when I used to ride out into the, the hills. And I've seen them pretty much all over the country. And it's quite common to see people pulling animals and birds and whatever else that they've snared in the bush, you know, and then taking them away to be sold at a local market. They either skin them and use the hair and eat the meats or sell the meat separate. But China has a massive appetite for random animals, and that's because of the TCM belief that if you eat specific parts of specific animals, it somehow benefits you 
in a medicinal way. So if you eat the heart of a random civet or something, it's going to make your heart stronger. If you eat the legs from this animal, it's going to make your legs stronger. If you eat pig's brains, it makes you smarter. If you eat, you know, tiger meat, a tiger penis, it'll make you better in bed. If you eat rhino horn, the same thing. You know, all this kind of crap. It is crap, and I'm going to call it crap. That is not a good part of Chinese culture. It's based in superstitious nonsense. It's witchcraft. It's the same kind of thing you see in Africa with the Sangomas and their Muti and their nonsense. I don't agree with this stuff and that part of Chinese culture can take a hike. It's rubbish, it's backwards, it's medieval and it causes the extinction of beautiful and rare animals around the world. Just ask anyone who's trying to fight the pangolin poaching and the rhino poaching and the elephant poaching and so on. The main drive for these poachers is to sell them for TCM back to China. Actually, I came across this really weird concoction. I have absolutely no idea what's going on here. Um, it looks like a upside down bird, feathers and all, and uh, maybe a good 30, 20, 30 snake heads cut off and a bunch of snakes inside of here. I'm assuming this is alcohol. Uh, I've heard this a lot throughout China, but this is the first time I've seen a whole bird with uh, feathers on it. But let's move beyond the wild animal stuff because, you know, it is what it is. It's poaching. It's, by the way, has been legal to eat wild meat and sell wild, you know, animals in China for since I got there. Recently, with this current crisis, they've kind of put it on hold. After the 2003 SARS epidemic, they did put it on hold, but they kind of let it creep back. And when they did put it on hold, they still said, okay, you can't sell everything, but you can still sell these specific wild animals. Um, in fact, we saw um, the Black Plague, the bubonic plague come back because of someone who ate a, a raw marmot liver in Inner Mongolia, what is it, two years ago. It's quite common to see these rare and terrible diseases transfer from animal to human in China because people still eat these random animals and they still have this very strong belief that it's good for you. And even the young people, it gets passed down by their grandparents saying, you know, eat this and so they eat it. And you know, if you're part of a big family and you go to Chinese New Year dinner, you'll have an uncle there who's killed some random animal who serves it to the family because he thinks that it's good for everyone's health. You see the potential for these pandemics to flare up um, is, is very large in China. Anyway, let's move on to dogs. I made a video a while ago about, you know, asking the question, do Chinese people eat dogs? And in that video, I was very adamant to point out that the majority of the people that I know, the more sophisticated people, do not eat dogs. But I'm getting sick and tired of this trend of people going around trying to play this down and say that Chinese people don't eat dogs because they do. Chinese don't eat dogs. And they eat dogs around the entire country. You see, it's a very common narrative for these people trying to portray this lie that Chinese people don't eat dogs. They always say, oh, Chinese don't eat dogs. Maybe a few uneducated people in the south of China eat it. Or if you're in the south of China, they'll be like, maybe a few uneducated people in the north of China eat it. It's bullshit. People around the entire country eat, eat dog. In fact, I'm going to show you some clips. So please, if you're sensitive and you really have, a, well, if you're a decent person who likes dogs, you probably don't want to watch this. Just listen, okay? Turn away. But um, I'm going to start out in Yunnan. You see, Yunnan, everybody knows, is this beautiful, <clears throat> fantastic place. You, you would have thought I'd start in Guangdong, but no, I'm starting in Yunnan. Everybody knows Yunnan for the beautiful rice terraces and the, you know, the lanterns in the cities. And it's a fantastic place to go as a tourist. They've got a lot of 
uh, touristy areas, you find a lot of backpackers go there, etc. So uh, part of filming Conquering Southern China, which we filmed in 2015, <clears throat> we ended up in um, a, a city called Dianshui. And we'd been riding all day and we arrived. And in fact, if you watch uh, the Con Conquering Southern China, there's this whole segment where we uh, showed how they make tofu using this so-called uh, crystal spring, this like fresh spring. Turns out it's polluted and it's actually causing a lot of health issues for the people around there. But anyway, um, they make this tofu there. And you can see in Conquering Southern China, we sat down and there was this boss and he was serving us the tofu. What you didn't see is when we walked in the door is that same guy was chopping up dogs with a meat cleaver and kind of waving around dog legs and stuff in a very jovial sort of a way. And uh, all the tourists that were coming there were eating the dog too. It's a big part of the cuisine in that city. You see, this is not something that's local to the south or the north or the east or the west. I'm going to prove that in this video. Anyway, so this is commonly accepted as something to do in Yunnan. Let's now move over to the next spot <clears throat> and let's go to a first tier city because yeah, Jianshui, it's like a touristy city. It's like a th probably a fourth, fifth, sixth tier city. It's not that important. It's just there for tourism and they've got all these wells and temples and stuff. And it's definitely, definitely worth a visit if you're ever there, by the way. It's a beautiful little place. Um, but yeah, they're eating dog there. That's something that I filmed myself. Well, actually my producer filmed while we were there, but that's, I was there. Um, and that's what I try to do is I try to provide proof and some actual footage of things I've taken myself so that it's not secondhand information. Okay, let's move on to Guangdong. Let's move to Shenzhen. Now, Shenzhen is a first tier city. It is on par with Shanghai and Beijing and Guangzhou. It is the only other city other than Shanghai that has a stock exchange in China. It's incredibly sophisticated. Um, and you've got these very rich areas out in Nanshan and places and Cocoa Park and the CBD with all these beautiful buildings and skyscrapers and, you know, for all in <clears throat> intents and purposes, it looks like a first world country. However, all you need to do is walk around the neighborhoods a little bit, get out of your little bubbles out in uh, Cocoa Park and uh, Shenzhen Bay areas and stuff, and you will start to see the usual type of China stuff. You'll start to see wet markets. In fact, even in the posh areas, you've got these wet markets where they just sell live animals or freshly killed animals, just meat lying around and stuff. And then you'll also see people, especially during wintertime, serving dog meat. <clears throat> now, this is a, a carcass that I filmed myself. Uh, it's not the only one. <clears throat> Years ago, I did another video where I showed another, well, I actually ended up blurring it for, I was being too nice. But I blurred it and that was in my local neighborhood in uh, the Longhua district, which is just outside the city center. But this is downtown Lohu where I filmed this. OK, so think about uh, if you went to Times Square or something like that. You know, we we're talking about downtown, the very sophisticated part of the city. And all I did was walk down some alleyways. And here we go. People are selling dog meat and their adverts up for it. You know, the carcass is hanging there. It's not like it's a secret or anything. Of course, if you go to Guangzhou, any place like that, you'll find dog meat too. Anywhere around Guangdong, it's actually fairly, um, you know, well known. But the most well known, and we're still in the south of China here. Don't worry, North, you'll get your turn. Um, the most well known dog meat thing in China is the Yulin Dog Meat Festival. Now I'm going to show you some footage from the Yulin Dog Meat Festival, which was taken by uh, Sea Milk when he went there with Charlie. And, you know, I personally have always avoided going here. I got a friend who lives in Yulin. I got a, well, a friend who got married in Yulin um, and I just didn't go and I'm, I'm not interested in going there because um, it quite frankly disgusts me because it's uh, celebrated and they make a big thing out of this every year as to how they, you know, torture and kill these dogs. And it's a very public display. And I'm not going to show any dog torture and cooking alive and skinning alive footage because I've seen that with my own eyes and it's it's horrendous and it's the kind of thing that stays with you and I would not want to inflict that on anyone else I mean you're talking about someone from South Africa who's seen people shot and killed in front of him you know I've seen a lot of crap go on in my life but uh, seeing dogs being butchered in these absolutely inhumane ways that happen uh, in Yulin, not only in Yulin, or every time uh, dog meat is prepared, there's a certain amount of torture involved because it's believed 
that the more the animal suffers, the more tender the meat, some bullshit like this. So anyway, I'm not going to show you that, but I will show you the aftermath here. And you can see here in Yulin um, kind of what's going on. This is in Guangxi province. Okay, so these are three different provinces in the south that I've talked about now. Let's forget about the south for a little bit. <clears throat> Let's go north. So you see, everybody should know that it's not just China that eats dogs, right? Uh, Korean people eat dogs. It's more shunned in Korea and there's a lot more um, uh, pushback against it these days. Uh, I'm talking about South Korea here. Uh, North Korea, I think they'll eat anything. Um, we also have Vietnam and various other Southeast Asian countries, which of course eat dogs too. And I'm not trying to defend anyone. The thing is those countries, they will kind of just say, yeah, we eat dog. But in China, you have these absolutely disconnected morons going online saying Chinese don't eat dogs. Uh, recently, I received a lot of personal letters asking me whether Chinese people eat dogs. So I want to clarify that Chinese people don't eat dogs. As if, well, like I said, it's, it's, you'd have to understand China to understand why people could know so little about their own country. Honestly, if you ever want to know anything about China, the last person you want to ask is a mainland Chinese person. This is ridiculous, but it's true because of the insular um, way people live their lives and the way that they are forced to listen to state media all the time. And very few of them actually get out and explore the entire country, uh, you know, as I have. Anyway, um, back to the whole dog meat thing. So uh, <clears throat> during conquering northern China, <clears throat> we went up to... Uh, you know, of course, all the, the northeastern provinces, and we rode through on our motorcycles. And I noticed a lot more dog meat restaurants up in the north, far more than down in the south. Because as you drive on these back, we call them, usually we drive on the Guodals, which are these G roads. And those are kind of like trucks take them, and they're, they're the national roads, they're not the highways. Um, and there are no tolls on them, which is nice, but uh, they're always in bad disrepair. But then you get to see the kind of what the local truckers and stuff eat. And a favorite for all the truckers up north was these places that sell dog meat and uh, sheep soup, yang tang and go ro. And they, you know, you see these um, restaurants all over the place. So here I've filmed a, a, a dog meat, or what would you call it, shish kebab. Uh, shop, you know, that's a Goro Chuan shop. Then um, <clears throat> closer to the uh, Korean border, the North Korean border, you'd see a lot of these uh, Gaoli Goro Dians, which means, uh, you know, Korean style <coughs> dog meat restaurants. But it doesn't mean it's for Koreans or by Koreans. It's, uh, it's Chinese run restaurants staffed by Chinese people meant for Chinese customers, obviously, and it's in a Chinese only place, you know. So it's one of those things. It's kind of like saying oh, Italian style sausage or whatever. Uh, so Korean style dog you can get <clears throat> in a lot of the areas up in Jilin and uh, in near the border of uh, North Korea. These are this is something that I filmed myself, too. So, you know, in the northern provinces, we got uh, a dog meat places in Shenyang. We got we saw dog meat places in uh, Heilongjiang. We saw dog meat places in Jilin. We saw dog, dog meat places uh, up in near Dalian and all these places. So, you know, all of the, the different provinces that we went through and the cities we went through, you could see dog meat restaurants. But OK, what about the capital? Let's go to Beijing here. Now, it's very easy to find out if a place has dog meat or not, because all you need to do is load up Baidu Maps, which is, you know, Google Maps equivalent and type in Goro Dian, which means dog meat store, basically. And that can be used for, you know, restaurant as well. And well, take a look. We've got examples of dog meat restaurants in Beijing. And I tell you what, this is not all of them because Baidu only usually shows you the first 10 results. You can go in and see more. Okay, what about Shanghai, the most sophisticated uh, city in China? No, at least that's what they claim it to be. Let's search there. What do we find? Yep. Guess what? We got dog meat restaurants in Shanghai too. How about let's just zoom out and just do a search on the whole country. Dog meat restaurants. Well, I've got to say that's a lot. And each one of these is just, you know, if you zoom in, it says like here, there's X amount of dog meat restaurants in this area, in this area, in this area. Now, of course, I have my own moral compass when it comes to uh, dog meat. I think it's abhorrent and I hate the practice of people eating dogs. But 
who am I to say whether it's correct or not based on another country's culture? And so if Chinese, traditional Chinese uh, culture demands this is part of what they do, you know, fine. You get a lot of people arguing that, hey, what's the difference between dog meat and goat meat and, you know, cow meat and stuff and whatever. That's a good argument to be had another day. However, that's not what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about is the fact that this is a provable, demonstrable fact that Chinese people eat dog, yet you have these so-called what well-to-do sophisticated netizens and people going online adamantly denying it saying no Chinese people do not eat dogs Chinese don't eat dogs it's bullshit and this shows you the mentality of China no Tiananmen Square massacre never happened no there's no oppression of the Uyghurs in Xinjiang they're just all terrorists no you know Tibetans should not have the Dalai Lama unless we choose it of course no, you are not allowed, you know, I, I could go on and on and on. It's a bunch of bullshit, but basically it's this disconnect, you know, this, this denial. And the Chinese government does it too. They'll be like, oh, no, we don't do this. Meanwhile, they do it. And I can prove it. That's the thing. I've been there. I've seen that. I've filmed it. And I haven't even gotten onto the hygiene stuff yet. You know, I got sidetracked by the whole dog meat thing, and I apologize for that. But, you know, it is a passionate point that I will always stick to. I really don't agree with it. But what I really would like to talk about is how the current crisis is spread in China. You see, it starts by people eating all these random animals. And yeah, you might try to argue that the current, you know, virus comes from perhaps a bio lab or whatever. But no, there have been plenty of other examples like that bubonic plague case that we had and SARS and various other things in the past which have come from animal to human transfer because of this, this very chaotic relationship that Chinese people have with eating random animals. Um, so it starts there, but why is it that it spreads so quickly in China? Why is it that it uh, does not spread as quickly outside of China? What's going on? Well, I can definitely say that it's down to hygiene, personal hygiene practices. And China is about a hundred years behind other countries when it comes to personal hygiene. And I'm talking about that in generalities, of course. This does not apply to Sun Li Tuan in Beijing or Coco Park in Shenzhen or, you know, the Bund in Shanghai. Of course, you can get a first world experience if you live, work or hang around these big cities. But China in general, I mean, I kind of made it a point of uh, kind of a fun little thing the the last road trip I did a uh, big road trip in the north with uh, with sea milk is every time we'd stop at a truck stop now guys truck stops we all know truck stops are gross right truck stops everywhere in the world are kind of gross so you know you got to keep that in mind but I've been to some of the worst truck stops in South Africa and some of the worst truck stops in America you know what I'm talking about like along the borders of Mexico and stuff in Arizona and whatnot and I've seen some pretty nasty stuff, but one thing that I've always noticed in South Africa and in America too is that no matter how filthy and run down the truck stop bathrooms are, you still have toilet paper available and you still have soap and a place to wash your hands. However, I was appalled at what I saw as I traveled through northern China. And I'm not trying to nitpick here and go like, oh, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. Every single truck stop that we stopped at to fill up with petrol and, uh, you know, to take a rest, the bathrooms were unusable. I'm going to take a video. This is a truck stop toilet in China. Ugh. Oh, my word. It's vile. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> That's the urinal over here. Oh my word, what is that? This is disgusting. I think we need to do an Andy Cam vlog here, dude. So, what? Oh, okay. Oh my word, that's just fucking foul. Let's take a look at this truck stop. Oh, 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 oh God, this is gross. This is, <laughs> wow. Oh wow, this is bad. The smell, the, the smell is just... Oh my word. Oh, that's just disgusting. I'm out of here.
What's inside this toilet, Simo? How about we open it up? Well, I need a piss, so this should be should be the place to do it, right? Uh oh. Whoa, well, no, hang on. There are hornets and stuff. There's flies and hornets everywhere. What? That's a big ass hornet in there. I'm probably gonna avoid that. <laughs> Let's see what's inside these roadside truck toilets. See a lot of uh, flies. Oh my. Oh, oh. oh my word. Oh, that's disgusting. Oh, it's like, oh. 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 Okay, we're talking about just holes in the ground, feces lying everywhere, no toilet paper, nowhere to wash your hands, no soap. It's disgusting. I've got footage I'm going to show you because, you know, what you've been seeing now that I've been playing in the background. But uh, this is why these things spread. People spit everywhere. Spitting is a huge problem in China. And I often get people in my comments saying, ah, oh, you say people in China spit. Well, you know, in America, I see people spitting all the time. Bullshit. OK, yes, of course, you get people that spit and you'll come across them. But, uh, you know, you might see one guy in a month take a spit maybe if you're watching a baseball game and they're dipping you know <laughs> but if you uh walk around in china in a city uh, or a town in a day you'll see plenty of people spitting especially in the morning you know people clearing their lungs and again it's down to traditional chinese medicine and it's it's an important thing to do so people will be spitting all over the place this spreads disease especially the current uh, you know virus that's going around it spreads through droplets so if you're spitting on everything people and kids walking through your spit they're going to pick up this disease so that's one of these big issues snot rockets i want to show you this clip that i filmed in guangzhou the first tier city of guangzhou it's one of the four best of the in the country here's this old guy and one thing i'd like you to pay attention to is the fact that he has a bloody tissue in his hand what does he do he's still snot rockets on the ground rather than blowing his nose in the tissue and then he uses the tissue to clean up the disgusting bits of snot all over his hands. Why not just blow into the tissue? Well, because I guess that's why the grandparents allow the children to urinate and defecate on the streets too, because they just don't want to be near the stuff that they're expelling from their body and they just want it out and gone. Um, this is why these things spread. It's this lack of hygiene and it's systemic. It's part of society, especially the older generation. And, you know, you've got millions and millions and millions of people who do not have proper personal hygiene. They're not used to washing their hands after going to the bathroom with soap or at all. Especially if you go to any kind of truck stop or any of these kind of public bathrooms anywhere, you don't even have the option to wash your hands. Um, and they're just not used to not spitting and snot rocketing and whatever else in public. All of these things come together to create the perfect storm eating rancid, weird, wild animals, and then not having any kind of hygiene to prevent the spread of these diseases. This is something you'll find all over the rural parts of China and in the cities too, unfortunately, because, you know, rural people got family in the cities too. Anyway, I'd like to wrap this up by saying that the very reason that I did not ever talk about these particular things and show these kinds of footages or try to judge too harshly is the exact reason why I am currently showing you this. I want everybody to know the truth. I want everybody to see what needs to be improved in China. If we're going to prevent future epidemics and pandemics from happening, China does need to change a few things and they need some pressure from the outside world to do so, otherwise they never will. They need to stop this cruel practice of randomly eating random things. And it's not just about eating, it's the way they treat the animals that's the worst. The, the animals go through absolute torture. And you know these dogs that are being eaten and stuff, a lot of them have rabies and terrible diseases and stuff because I know a guy who rescues these dogs. Every time he rescues the, a bunch of dogs, they are in terrible condition, riddled with disease. So, I mean, people are eating these diseased dogs and eating these diseased meats and random bats and civets and marmots and stuff that's a bad idea 
that's definitely going to cause issues. You know, if it's controlled and you have factories and you have, you know, vaccines and, you know, immunizations or whatever else that's necessary to make sure your meat's not tainted, that's fine. But this is very uncontrollable. And then, of course, all the bad personal hygiene habits which allow it to spread. These things need to change in China. So that's why I made this video. And uh, I also wanted to put out a stark message to anyone who watches these morons walking around in Sun Li Tuan in Beijing or Coco Park in, in Shenzhen or the Bund in Shanghai trying to pretend as if they know what's really going on in China because they don't. You have to get off the highways. You have to see the, the majority of China, which is not in these first tier cities. And once you've done that, and I resonate more with the rural countryside than I do the cities, to be honest, because I personally don't come from a place of privilege. I grew up in Africa. I grew up in a very, very harsh situation where um, I don't want to get into it too much, and I will in the future, but you know, being a minority that grew up that was struggling and having a lot of crap and money was never around, and uh, you know, the entire country struggling just to kind of move forward, I know what it's like. So when I go to these posh areas in the cities and I see people spending on one meal what an entire family in the countryside of China will survive on in a month, it actually makes me feel a little angry, especially when those same people that live in these plush apartments and these fancy cities and these fancy areas get on their high horse and try to tell everybody that uh, China's fantastic and great and has no issues. So anyway, guys, uh, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. And as always, you know the drill. Stay awesome.